Welcome to a Fort Knox update. Uh, I'm John Ford here with Sanjit Biswas, the co-founder and CEO of Samsara. I want to talk about the Q3 earnings. Uh, your stock, last time I checked, um, was up about 20% on those results, 24% um, right now, because it's been a few minutes. Um, so th there was some surprise here, at least from those who were used to an earnings season that's been a little spottier when it comes to enterprise adoption. What was powering these results that were a beat and a raise um, over, over what was expected? Well, first, John, thanks for having me on. Um, I think the quarter was great. It really reflects the momentum we're seeing in our markets, which are in the world of physical operations. So what Samsara does is we help digitize the world of physical operations, uh, companies that are in the supply chain, construction industry, the energy utilities, the local governments, all the people that power the infrastructure of our planets. We help them be safer, more efficient, more sustainable. So in terms of the Q3 results, uh, we saw strong momentum. These customers are digitizing faster now than ever. And it's because there's some real world problems that need solving. There's some uh, labor tightness in the market that is ongoing, as we heard this morning. Uh, there are uh, some asset availability issues, so it's hard to get trucks and trailers and construction equipment. Um, there's still some pretty high fuel prices out there. So being able to use data to tackle those challenges is really making some real world difference for these customers. So as you can see here, as one of your earnings slides up uh, 724 million in um, annual annualized recurring revenue, 47 percent growth year over year in that. And there's uh, an increase in the number of customers that are spending more than $100,000 a year. Are, are you seeing it take longer to um, to get these deals done or is what you're providing in such a position that the pace uh, of those deals getting done is remaining somewhat consistent? We talked about this a little bit on the previous earnings or Q2 earnings. So we did see uh, uh, sales cycles elongate a little bit. And we're talking weeks, not, not months or, or years. Uh, and that has remained steady. So they haven't gotten longer. They haven't really uh, shortened up. But again, they're, they're remaining slightly elevated. And that's continued in the Q3. In spite of that, though, we saw that strong momentum that you highlighted, uh, the 47% growth in annualized recurring revenue, we're at 724 million. We actually saw a lot of momentum in our large customers, the folks that are signing up at scale. Uh, they're the ones who spend over $100,000 with us. We now have over 1,000 of those customers. And these are the people that have very complex physical operations. So that's where, um, you know, in spite of the macro economy, they're trying to go tackle these challenges. And so that's, I think, why we're seeing this great momentum. So let's get a, a little bit more detailed now, mm -hmm. um, kind of back to some of the slides in your investor presentation. Walk me through this waste transportation and container rental company in Texas case study and exactly how it is that you were able to save them money. So we initially talked, we focused more on sensors that gave me the sense of, mm -hmm. you know, you're tracking vehicles and freight and sort of where they are, but also you've got HD recording and cameras involved. How does that lower uh, potentially a customer's cost? So just for a little bit of context, what customers like this uh, waste uh, transportation container rental company do is they have very large distributed field services um, uh, teams, right? So they have folks like the one that you see here in the photo where they have heavy vehicles out on the roads. Um, and first, they want to know where those vehicles are. And that's the GPS tracking or telematics side of what we do. That's where the business got started. Uh, but they also care about their over the road safety. So are these drivers distracted in any way? Can they be coached to drive a little bit safer, increase their following distance, basically reduce the likelihood of an accident. And the way that we help accomplish that is through data. So we have cameras that run AI at the edge uh, in the device itself and can basically alert the driver if they're uh, maybe following a little too carefully or closely or not wearing their seat belts or looking at their mobile phone, which happens to many of us, right? It's, it's, a, it's a kind of daily distraction. But when you're driving something that, that weighs many, many tons, it can be really dangerous. So what our software does is it helps identify some of those habits and helps break those habits through positive reinforcement and feedback loops. So it kind of gamifies it. And that's how they achieve some of these outcomes. Um, what you see in the center of the slide is the savings that this customer saw. Uh, they were able to exonerate themselves from about half the accidents. So in half the cases, the accidents were not their fault. They had HD video and they could show that, you know, maybe someone slammed on the brakes in front of them. And, and that's what happened. Um, they were able to coach their drivers and they realized about a half million dollar savings just on their annual insurance premiums. 
And that paid for the system within five months. So that's the ROI or the payback that many of our customers are looking for uh, because in their businesses, these dollars and cents really matter. So specifically there on the exoneration rate, mm -hmm. um, how we're used to seeing perhaps with either rod sh ride sharing or professional car services, you know, now you can get these cameras and you mount them, mm -hmm. um, whatever you can get them at Best Buy. But my, my feeling is my sense is that you're probably uh, able to get that footage streamed into a Samsara cloud and analyzed. So you don't have to worry about it being stranded uh, locally at the endpoint. Is that part of what makes this useful? You got it. So if you have a single vehicle, uh, a, a, a dash camera, as, as they're, they're called, they're, uh, they're pretty great, right? You get HD video. If you have a fleet of vehicles or if you have thousands of employees, chances are there's something going on every single day of the week. And so being able to see all of that in the cloud and then being able to see the patterns and coach those behaviors really makes a big difference in terms of outcomes. So that's where the scalability of a single dash cam doesn't really work for an, a large enterprise. And uh, what we've done is turn that into a platform where it's not just the video, it's not just the AI, but it's the coaching and the workflows. It's understanding how different regions are performing and really being able to, to change or transform those habits. That's what changes the outcome in terms of risk. So how is your ability to address this market shifting in a slowing economy? There's still a, a lot of goods, a lot of inventory that needs to move, and mm -hmm. you're not highly penetrated because you're bringing new technology into the space. How does that factor into your outlook? Well, we serve a, a wide range of industries. So we do do a lot of work with the supply chain companies in transportation and warehousing. But we also do a lot of business with companies in food and beverage and construction and energy utilities. Broadly speaking, these industries are continuing to run uh, regardless of the interest rate. So you, we still need you know, food and beverage. We need our uh, lights to turn on. We need the electricity to run and so on. And for them, these companies are affected by these inflationary issues, right? So they're seeing rising costs. They're seeing labor tightness. And they're looking for ways to go find ways to save money. So that's where, where these two things come together. And our products are more relevant now than ever because they they really provide data and insights into what's going on in these uh, these kind of asset heavy and labor heavy operations. Wanted to ask you to walk me through uh, this other case study scenario as well that you had in mm -hmm. the investor deck, the, the less than a truckload carrier, because efficiency during this period, especially with energy costs, fuel costs being so high, something that a lot are focused on. Um, fuel reporting and vehicle idle and key in this case study. Explain to me what the technologies are that, that you bring to bear here. So it's actually very similar to what we just talked about in safety, except applied to fuel. So this is a company that operates throughout the Midwest. They're also a fairly large scale and they consume a lot of, uh, a lot of gallons of diesel fuel uh, to, to run their operations. Uh, for them, they noticed that they had a sort of bad habit around engine idling. So the drivers would leave the engines on uh, when making deliveries or maybe out of convenience. And, you know, these these little bits of uh, of idling started to really add up for them. And that was the kind of instinct that they had, but they didn't have a tool that could show them where it was happening and how to coach people on it. They deployed Samsara. They saw a 50 percent decrease in engine idling. Uh, that that saved them about half a million dollars again in fuel costs and 150,000 gallons of fuel, which, by the way, isn't just dollar saved, but it's also carbon savings in terms of carbon emissions, which many end customers want reporting on. And that's how they did it is they took the data, uh, looked at it at large scale, created a program around it and uh, gamified it, essentially. And so that's how they saved uh, half a million dollars. And that's on an annual basis, by the way. So it's something that they'll be able to realize every single year. Does that flow straight to the bottom line or is it necessary, you find, with these companies for them to incentivize their drivers with rewards, you know, to, to go through the inconveniences as well? It's great for yeah. the customer themselves to be able to see at the end of the year, yeah, we saved a half a million dollars. But if the, if the trucker's not happy at a time when labor is hard to come by, maybe that ends up costing them in another way. Yeah. And, you know, I think they see this as an opportunity to reinvest in their business. And so they did take those savings and they found ways to deploy that capital. Uh, you're right. Uh, this specific company actually created a driver rewards program. And so they took some of those savings and, and made gift card programs and things like that. And also just driver retention and safe driving bonuses, which really benefited the drivers. Um, this company saw a 15 percent improvement 
in driver retention, uh, which is, uh, is something that is really needed in this uh, tightness uh, that the industry is facing. And I think overall, you just talk to the drivers, they're, they're really happy and excited about the system because you know, it, it's, it's putting a little bit more money in their pocket. They feel better in terms of what they're doing for the environment. And it's kind of win-win all around. What are you seeing on the manufacturing side? We spent a lot of time talking about the mobility side, the logistics side, which of course is important at this time as we focus on goods moving inventory and, and all of the volatility there. But uh, another part of your focus is in technology at the point of manufacture. Um, what in particular are customers interested in spending on now? What's the most valuable data during this period? Well, I think it's related to those areas that we talked about, safety, efficiency, and sustainability. Safety isn't just over the road, but it's even at the, the loading dock or the warehouse, it's on the factory floor. And worker safety incidents, unfortunately, just happen in these industries, right? This is why we have uh, associations like OSHA to make sure we're keeping uh, workers safe. Being able to exonerate yourselves in terms of what happened, just figure out really what went down if there was an accident is, is really important. And then being able to create a culture around safety is also important. So we're seeing that a lot in these industries where they want to figure out ways to really build safe habits and uh, use technology and apps to make that happen. So that could be as simple as a checklist, by the way. Uh, you, you know, it turns out if you are mindful about safety on a job floor, you're likely to end up reducing risk because people are now thinking about it very actively. So we're seeing that, which is a lot of interest in those kinds of safety applications. And then same thing with uh, efficiency and sustainability. How do you get data about these physical operations and change these behaviors in a, in a kind of fundamental way? Your path to profitability um, is looking pretty darn clear <laughs> at this point based on these re results. Tell me how you're managing for profitability and how you're thinking about still fueling the parts of, of the business that are growing and are going to sort of gain you that customer base that's that's so important in those customers who are spending uh, $100,000 or more per year. So in many ways, we're just like our customers where we're focused on the highest ROI parts of our business and making sure that we are continuing to scale. Uh, we talked about the momentum, uh, not just in large customers. We have momentum in our international sales across our multiple product lines. So it's important that we continue to build capacity to maintain this growth trajectory over the long term. So that's a core value of ours is built for the long term. Within that, though, we want to be efficient. So inside the company, we talk about efficient growth. And that for us means understanding exactly what's driving the growth and then minimizing any sort of extraneous spend. So really kind of pinpointing what, what's kind of driving that. We're investing in sales capacity, but also support capacity as we have more and more customers on our platform. And then engineering so we can continue to innovate, build new features, new products, scale up our platform, integrate and partner with more technology partners. Um, these are all kind of long-term growth initiatives of ours, and we're able to do it while maintaining this path to profitability, which you just saw. So um, this week, Amazon announced AWS Supply Chain, a, a set of technologies, services to help customers have insight into their supply chains. Is that a competitor to you or is it an accelerant for you? Do you end up plugging into things like that? And does it make the, the data that's coming out of Samsara's products and whatnot more visible? Or are they really trying to compete with what you're offering, you think? I would say that specific offering is very much adjacent to what we do. We don't have a directly competitive product there. And it is indicative of this digitization that's happening in physical operations. So we talked about a number of the different industries. Sam, sorry, as much as we'd like to do many, many things, we can't do everything. So I would fully expect there to be dozens or hundreds of great companies innovating in these areas. And we are happy to partner with them. And it's not just companies like Amazon. We're partnering with insurance companies to offer risk adjusted premiums driven off of data. We're partnering with payroll companies to help pay people more accurately and faster. Uh, we're partnering with route optimization companies for some of these industries. So I think what you just heard from Amazon is kind of in that spirit of this whole kind of movement towards digitizing the physical uh, physical world. I mean, is it adjacent in a way that it's completely separate? I guess is what I'm trying to figure out, or is it a potential accelerant if um, there's a more of a movement to, uh, to to put the data in a place where it's useful? for your potential customers and your existing customers? 
Yes, and I think um, there's Amazon, but we also hear, uh, you know, many of our customers are working with Microsoft and to get business intelligence about their physical operations uh, and, and many, many other players. So the uh, openness of our platform, I think, is important there. This data is, is really designed to be portable, where you can plug it into lots of different systems and realize value from it. So our large customers, uh, they typically plug us into four systems or more. I've heard of one customer that had four dozen systems connected to Samsara. And so that could be supply chain management and demand planning systems, uh, insurance and payroll, like I said, um, and even internal business apps. So we're seeing a just huge move towards digitization. Okay, and I got to mention the stock uh, still up about 24% on a day when the market itself, um, you know, the, the broader indices are down. So those strong results certainly uh, causing investors to take note. Sanjit, always good to catch up with you. Thanks for the update. Thanks, John.